So you've been looking into graduate school programs and narrowing down which programs, lab, or research areas that you're most interested in. The next step is talking to and reaching out to professors in those fields and programs and asking them, one, if they're accepting graduate students and if they would like to take you on as a potential graduate student. Choosing your graduate research advisor is one of the most important decisions that you're gonna have to make before arriving at grad school because it's really, really important. And I think that your relationship with your advisor is the single thing that shapes your graduate school experience. So you want to find someone that is doing work that you are also interested in doing, someone that you like their their advising style, their personality, and you can see yourself working very closely with anywhere from three to five plus years. So in order to find a professor that is willing to take you on, you first need to do some research to decide which research topic or area that you want to pursue in grad school. Uh, once you have a few topics that you're interested in, you can then look at the people that are doing that research. Then do a little bit more digging into those specific people, their papers, their labs. Then you can send them a cold email asking if they're accepting grad students. And you wanna get on their radar and make a really good first impression. So the goal of the email is to one, introduce yourself, like I said, you want to make a good impression because professors are really, really busy. I am super busy and lose track of emails just as a grad student. So like imagine professors that get five times as many emails. Um, you really, really wanna make a good impression. Two, you wanna tell them that you are interested in their lab. Three, you want to introduce the ask, so ask them if they're accepting grad students and if they're willing to meet with you to discuss your interest in their lab. Four, you want to attach your CV, transcripts, and publications. Anything that you think they might ask for, you want to just provide it up front. This can show that you're serious, not interested in wasting their time with like back and forth email. So you're just giving them everything that they might want to look at up front. Okay, so now that you know like the four goals of the email, we'll get into the details a little bit more. So when you introduce yourself, you want to introduce your name, who you are, what grade you're in, what university and program you're coming from. So if you have a bachelor's of science, what is your major? Do you have any minors? Then you'll want to quickly sum up your research interest or any relevant research experience that you have. So you can give a few sentences just about any previous research you've done and you wanna nicely transition from what you've done in the past to what you want to do and how you want to contribute to their lab. So don't focus too much on the past because while it is important, uh, grad school applications are really future focused. So they want to know how you're going to be contributing to the field, to their lab in order for them to make their decision. So next you wanna tell them that you're interested in their lab. And it's not enough to just say, oh, I saw your website. I'm really interested in the work that you're doing. Advisors and professors get tons of emails like this. And if yours is too generic, they're just gonna throw it in the trash, uh, completely ignore it. You wanna be really convincing, be specific, be enthusiastic about it. So you want to relate your previous research experience to their lab and what they're currently doing. This is really, really important. So you wanna make sure that what you say you're interested in is something that they've been working on within the past like year or two. You don't want it to be something that they did or published papers on a long time ago, but I've kind of like steered away from. So keep that in mind when you're forming this email. So look at their lab website, read through the different research projects that they have going on, look on Google Scholar at their recent publications, and you definitely want to read a few of their important recent papers so that you're able to tell them, I read this paper, this, 
and I thought this result or this method that you used was really, really interesting and why you thought it was interesting. So the more specific that you can be, the better here. And remember that like professors love their work. They love talking about their work. So if you show that you're actually interested in the work that they're doing, the really like niche topic that they're doing, they're going to appreciate this and want to start a conversation with you. You also want to let them know if you're applying or going to be applying to any big fellowships or scholarships such as the NSF GRFP, maybe the Fulbright and the Noah Nancy Foster scholarship. So these are all like really prestigious awards if you get them. And I think even telling them that you're applying for funding makes you look really good because it shows that you're a serious applicant, you're trying to go out and find your own funding, you're putting the time in to write this grant, this proposal, you're doing the work. And if you get any of these awards, it's really huge for you. Um, a lot of the times if you get something like the NSF GRFP, Almost any advisor is going to take you because you're coming to them with your own money. They don't have to spend money on you. And you're saying like, hey, my research interests align with yours. I have my own money. What do you think about working together? So yeah, if you're thinking about applying for any of that, then you definitely want to mention it in this email. So really quick, if you guys are getting any value out of this video, please give it a big like and subscribe. It's completely free. It really helps me. We're trying to grow this YouTube channel, so I would appreciate it so, so much if you guys feel like you're getting value out of this. Next, now that you told them a little bit about yourself and you convince them that you're actually interested in their lab, you want to introduce the ask. So this is asking them straight out if they're accepting graduate students for the term that you're going to be applying. Um, because sometimes they're not accepting grad students some semesters, so timing is really everything. And yeah, sometimes don't take it personally, but they just don't have the money or like bandwidth to take on another student and they'll be upfront with you about it. So one, ask if they're accepting, and then two, ask if they would be willing to meet with you to discuss your interest in their lab or to answer any other questions that you have about them or grad school in general. I also like to ask for any other information, advice, or like resources that would be good to know. Lots of times I've received emails back where they weren't accepting students, but they knew another professor who was like an early career scientist that was just starting up their lab that might be a better fit for me. Um, they can kind of direct you, give you contact info to other people. So you definitely want to ask for that here because you could find someone that you didn't originally consider and that could be really helpful. Then you want to attach your CV, which I just recently made a video on so you can check that out after if you want to know how to make your CV. You'll want to include transcripts as well as any publications that you have. These are things that they might ask for and you kind of want to just provide it up front because it makes their life easier. They don't have to go back and forth. Um, and I think they will appreciate it, especially if they're interested in you. So you'll want to read over your email, proofread it, make sure the attachments are actually attached and then send it off. Uh, you want to make sure there's like no serious typos. Also make sure that it doesn't seem too long. I think two paragraphs, is a perfect length. Anything more than that might be too much for them to read. So also keep this in mind, but once it looks good, just send it. And you want to wait anywhere from like one to two weeks for a response. Professors are really, really busy. They might not see your email or might not get to it um, after those two weeks. So it's totally acceptable to just send a follow-up email. And you wanna do so on the same email thread so that they know that you actually reached out to them and it's very easy for them to just be like, ah, this is their first email. So your follow-up email can be very short. Like, hey, this is Alexis. I'm following up on my email where I was like interested in your lab for fall 2023 or something. So very simple, but sending follow-up emails are 
completely fine and lots of times it might take like one or two follow-up emails to get a response from someone but this isn't bad they're just busy and this shows that you're definitely really interested so being persistent is okay and i'll share an example of one of the emails that i sent out during this time i sent so many emails to like professors all different programs maybe like eight professors at just one school. And out of all of those emails that I've sent, I got maybe like a handful of responses back. So a lot of them aren't going to reply. And that is totally okay. That's kind of just the nature of the game. That's why you want to reach out to a lot and reach out early. So I think sending these emails, the earlier is better. Usually you'll be working on your graduate school applications about a year in advance before starting your graduate program. So for example, you'll want to start preparing the summer before. So this is like around July and August and applications are usually due in November or January for a false start, at least in the US. It may be different in other places, but for this timeline, if your applications are due anywhere from November to January, then you'll want to be sending these emails out from August to like October, with October being kind of the latest, I think, because if you send emails in November when your applications are due in November, and December and like January, then it seems like you're kind of late. It shows that maybe you're not as on top of things and you really want to have a list of which advisors are actually accepting grad students because you don't want to apply to a school without a graduate um, advisor in mind, specifically one that you've already talked to and that you know is accepting grad students. Because a lot of the times, if you send out an application without talking to anyone, without contacting anyone at the university in that program, then your chances of getting accepted, I think, are pretty, pretty slim. And this probably depends on the department or program that you're applying to, but I know for like oceanography and marine science, you kind of need to have an advisor in mind. And they'll even ask you like, which ones have you contacted or been in contact with before? And yeah, finding a professor that is willing to take you on, that has the money to take you on and is a good fit for you is really, really important and will determine how your application process goes. So knowing this, you want to start sending these emails in mass. The earlier, the better. I think anywhere from August to October with like August, maybe even September being the sweet spot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helps you. If you're applying to graduate programs and would like some help, please check out my other videos that I've done on how to apply to grad school, common interview questions and ways to answer them, as well as how to create your CV. All right, thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.